Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Division I Rowing Selection Show. I'm your host, Will Haskett. Well, here we are. A year after not having a championship at all, we are just a week or so away from crowning a new national championship. And the programs have waited two years to reach this moment with the championships being held coming up at Nathan Benderson Park in Sarasota, Florida on May 28th through the 30th. It's hosted by the University of Central Florida and the Suncoast Aquatic Nature Center Association. 22 teams make the meet again this year. 10 right now are sitting back relaxing with no nerves. They know they're already in as automatic qualifiers, while 12 more will sit on the edge of their seats right now, still waiting to hear if they will row as an at-large selection. Each team will bring two eight boats and one four boat to Florida. And with so much to pack, let's get right to the selections so we can let you know if you're making the trip to Florida. We will unveil our 10 automatic qualifiers first. We go in alphabetical order. That starts with Gonzaga, sixth straight West Coast Conference Championship, sending the Bulldogs to the championship again. Fresh off wins in the Varsity 8 and the first two divisions of the fours. Andrew Derrick leads the way for this program. He was named the WCC Coach of the Year with some fresh talent to keep that streak going. Hannah Cooney was named the Newcomer of the Year in the conference, provides some of the strength in that first Varsity 8 boat. Marist is next. Back-to-back -back tournament appearances for the MAC champs who took the gold in all three grand finals in their conference meet. Michigan, no surprise here, the two-time national runner-ups ride into another championship regatta, fresh off a second consecutive Big Ten championship in an always competitive meet. The Wolverines earned 191 points, which was the second highest total in conference championship meet history. That included wins in six different races, including the top two eight races and top three races in the fours. Navy checks in next. Dominant performance in the Patriot League Championship earned the Mids their sixth consecutive conference title with the performance so strong in the Varsity 8 that the entire crew is the Athletic Department's Athlete of the Week. Northeastern next. Sixth NCAA tournament appearance for the champs from the Colonial with the team's best national finish being 17th back in 2017. Rhode Island, another automatic qualifier. The A-10 champs yet again. The Rams did so for an eighth time riding the AQ into the program's fifth national championship meet as a team. SMU next, the Mustangs won their first ever AAC title to reach the national championship regatta for the first time in program history. And it was done with perfection as the Mustangs won all three races in the meet, posting a score of 144 to sprint away with the title. Texas, again, the Longhorns are building closer and closer to a national title. Two years ago, they were running up to Washington for the national championship. That was the best finish in their fifth trip to the championship regatta. This year, just as strong, if not stronger. Fresh off sweeping all four races in the Big 12 championship meet, earning Texas their sixth consecutive conference title. Virginia, also a no shocker here in the automatic qualifier line, even with no competition in 2020. You couldn't snap the Cavaliers streak as Virginia won the ACC for an 11th consecutive year. How about 20 of 21? That's the total tally in this championship for the Cavaliers, who won all five grand finals in this year's meet to maintain the dominance. Kevin Sauer, again named ACC Coach of the Year, knows what it will take to win a national title, having overseen the 2010 and 2012 teams that won it all. And finally, wouldn't be Right, without Washington on the list, still the reigning champions of the sport. The quest for back-to-back -back titles has had to wait a year. Now the Huskies can pursue that national championship. The last time they went back-to-back -back as national champions, it was the first two years of the championship's history, so a chance for bookend repeats one whole generation apart. The Pac-12 champs once again enter the tournament as a strong favorite as the team heads diagonally across the country to defend its crown. All right, so those were the 10 teams that knew that they were automatically in this meet. Now on to the teams that have earned at-large selections this season. We'll go alphabetically here as well, which means it won't be a long wait for our first team. We say hello to Alabama, the Crimson Tide, runner up to Texas in the Big 12 meet and earned the program's first ever trip to an NCAA regatta with a squad that was able to medal in all four races in Austin. Brown is next, and with no official Ivy League meet this year, that didn't stop the seven-time national champions from competing and earning a spot to look for title number eight, which would extend the record. Brown went head-to-head -head with a couple of AQs we already announced today and announced and, and, and blessed and didn't lose to any of them in competition. So a strong, albeit limited, schedule for Brown gets them an at-large berth and a chance to go for title number eight. Next. At large bid goes to Cal, the Bears trading titles with Washington and they will pursue a national championship with number five in their sights next week when they travel across the country to compete in Florida. They're fresh off a third place finish in the Pac-12 championship and they were third in all three of the eights races. Duke earns a spot back to back tournament berths for the first time in program history. The runner up in the ACC meet there were podium finishes in five different races 
throughout that meet. Ohio State is next, the only program with three national titles in a row. Will another streak start this year for the Buckeyes? Watching Michigan win the Big Ten title is never easy, but it was as close as it could be. Just six combined seconds in the two eights races separated the Buckeyes from that team from the north. Make that up between now and Florida, and who knows what could happen for Ohio State. Princeton is next, a second Ivy League school that found a way to get to this championship in 2021, which is what the Tigers do. 23rd appearance ties Virginia for third most all time in a national championship is the only accomplishment left for this program to find, which just took four goals in the Dad Vale Regatta, their last competition heading into this NCAA championship. Rutgers is next, a rising force in the Big Ten, making back-to-back -back championship appearances for the first time in program history. A runner-up in the varsity eight race at the Big Ten meet to Michigan was a just a blink of an eye. I mean, very close in that race. This team is one that could certainly surprise coming up in Florida. Stanford is next, the 2009 national champions, finishing second in the Pac-12 meet and carry that momentum into their 15th championship appearance where Syracuse will be as well. Fifth regatta appearance as a team for the Orange, who got all five boats at the grand finals of the ACC meet, leading to a third place finish and a spot in this championship. Tennessee is next. Welcome back to the Volunteers who make the championship for the first time since 2010. All four of their boats made the podium at the Big 12 meet en route to a third place finish. Washington State checks in next, a lucky 13th appearance for the Cougars, who saw a streak of appearances snapped in 2019, but returned this year to begin a fresh run of regatta trips. And if you're doing the math, that means there's one more left. So breathe easy, Wisconsin. The Badgers snagged the last spot in the regatta by less than a length of a boat, it might feel like. The Badgers were fourth at the Big Ten meet, but saw time improvements across the entire fleet, which could be a sign of good things to come in Florida. This marks the 17th appearance in the national meet for Wisconsin. They finished seventh all the way back in 2010. That was the best finish for the program in its history so far. All right, so now you know all the teams that will be making their way to Florida to compete in this national championship. But what about the seeding for the three disciplines? For the first eight boats, or the first eight boats, I should say, Texas seeds number one, again, looking for that first national championship after coming oh so close to Washington, which seeds in behind them on the number two line. Maybe a sign of some things to come here. That will be a very interesting battle with the best boats for all the top teams looking for title contention. Stanford very strong. We mentioned their performance second place in the Pac-12 coming off of that performance. Virginia always there. Always the big names you see at the top of this one, but Texas, Washington, Stanford, Virginia, and Michigan one through five on the seed line in the first varsity eight boat discipline. Moving on to the second eight boats, and now you see the Washington depth earning them the top spot here in terms of the seeding with Texas right behind. And you'll see not a lot of difference between the top five teams when you look at that. Washington, Texas, Virginia, Stanford, and Michigan seem to be the ones that will be right there at the top of these meets, but don't sleep on the teams throughout the rest of the top ten, including Ohio State. Motivated, we mentioned how close they were in all those races at the Big Ten meet. They could easily rise up this board in terms of how things are seated and then all the way through the 22 teams in the field. And then finally the fours and how about the top? Stanford showing its depth with the top seed coming into this fours race as they'll slot in to the regatta coming up in Florida. Texas again edging ahead. This could be a good sign for the Longhorns the way that all those times and goes into the seedings play into which team will be able to accumulate the most points to be national champion coming up in just over a week. Michigan, Virginia, and then the defending champs from Washington sliding into the five line. All right, so with all of those seeds, all of the teams in, we now know what is going to take place except for who's going to win it all coming up next week in pursuit of a national championship. Each team can now begin making their travel plans to the national championship regatta with the action starting on May the 28th at Nathan Benderson Park in Sarasota, Florida, hosted by the University of Central Florida and the Suncoast Aquatic Nature Center Association. You can watch all of the action right here on NCA.com. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm Will Haskett. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. For the win! If a champion can teach us anything, it's to stay hungry, to keep our resolve, and to prepare for what's next. So to the players and the college sports community who never stop believing, the end goal is in sight. The ultimate rally, a comeback for all ages.
for the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the players. Let's bring on the next champion. We're ready.